Hello and welcome to the Keto Man's Club podcast. We're glad you're here, where each week we talk about men's health and lifestyle. We do so with the foundation of the ketogenic diet and lifestyle. If you don't know what keto is, stick around and you'll find out. The podcast will bring you real honest fun. Each week we strive to uncover the tips and tricks that you can use in your everyday life to maximize your overall health and find the clearest path to becoming the best version of yourself that you were meant to be. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Keto Man's Club podcast. Uh, again, my name is Chris. I'm one of your hosts. And uh, to my virtual right, I have Jim Inman. Say hi. Good evening, sir. How are you, Chris? I'm doing quite well. Good. Doing quite well. Uh, pleased to uh, get to, to do this one more time. And uh, to my virtual left, I have Alberto. What's going on, everybody? Not much, not much. Uh, okay, so today we've got a, a, another guest uh, from our Facebook group that we're really excited to get to talk to, get to dig into. Uh, we promise you his radio voice is going to just awe, be, be awe-inspiring. So, uh, you know, that that's going to be a good thing for sure. Um, before we get into that, uh, let's talk about the happenings of what's been going on this week in the Keto Man's Club uh, and also just in the keto world. Uh, Jim, got any any observations, anything that you picked up on? So a couple things. Number one is that uh, we continue to grow members, um, seems like at a faster rate, um, as we have, uh, the, the news is getting out about what we do and who we are and everything. Um, so every hundred members that we add to the group, we change up the header image um, in the Keto Man's Club to uh, celebrate some uh, successes, some before and after photos and things like that. And uh, so we have four currently right now uh, before and after photos of some of our guys who have followed this way of eating and clearly made some big improvements, inches lost, changes in lifestyle, all kinds of good stuff. So kudos to all of the guys who have come on board, who are sharing their stories and everything. And we've talked about this more than once in the podcast about the uh, the camaraderie, both in the uh, jokingly uh, good-natured ribbing and teasing one another and everything. But we also had a member um, who had some uh, pretty hard stuff uh, go on in the last couple of days with his family. And uh, he and his wife, for experiencing some marital issues, and he kind of laid some stuff out on the table. And um, it's a testament to what we have formed in the last couple of years uh, with the Keto Man's Club of the trust, the understanding, the place to be. It's a safe place to be open and honest about the uh, struggles that people are going through and whatnot. And um, it's just it's just become um, more than I ever expected when it was created. And I'm so glad to see all of these things happening. So I'm on, I'm on a, I'm on a great streak with all of this right now. And I'm so grateful for, um, all the moderators, the admins and the members who continue to share their stories and, uh, share their struggles as well to make things uh, move in a positive direction. So I think it's awesome. I'm good with stuff right now. Awesome. I am into that. It really is uh, a testament to, uh, our just our our group our our uh, the the men that have gotten together and they just are being true men uh, mm-hmm. in their their raw form together. Um, that there there's just something about that that's uh, just so uh, refreshing. So f- I think. Refreshing, yes, very refreshing. We're not we're not trying to put on facades. We're not trying to uh, to put on a face uh, to 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 impress each other. Uh, when we have bad days, we hear about it, and when or we share about it, and uh, so that that's really a very good thing. Uh, Alberto, how about you? Any any observations? Any news from your side? Uh, no, nothing. Nothing out of the ordinary. Another good week. Uh, work is crazy busy. Uh, I've had the mispleasure is that even a word mispleasure the non-pleasure of uh, so far eating at a restaurant every day for lunch which is uh sounds great until you do it often enough and still keeping it 100 percent keto and that's not the problem it's just after a while is it just gets old <laughs> i just want to go sure. home i want to eat a regular homemade meal <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Not that. And I, we've seen the pictures of your homemade meals. They are mouthwatering. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll bounce back into the the food topic towards the end of the podcast. I'm sure um, uh, along the way. I'm sure we'll we'll hit on it again too. Um, so, 
let's see here. I think that's all of the preliminary business that I have uh, for us right now. I do want to take a second real quick here at the beginning, um, just so that you don't, you know, turn it off, uh, you know, towards the end and not here. We really would crave and really appreciate uh, if you, the listener, would take the time to go on to whatever your podcast uh, application is, rate, leave a comment, uh, just put something out there. Even if it's a negative, Alberto wants to read negative comments. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so get, even if it's, uh, you know, even if it's not fully positive, share your experience with this podcast, get, help us get the word out because this podcast, we want it to be so much more than just something that we do within the group. Um, and we want it to be something that really grows and, uh, that rating and those comments will very definitely help us in that endeavor. Uh, you can also, so follow us um, on Instagram. It's Keto Man's Club Podcast. And if you uh, at any point in time have a question, uh, have a, have something that that you just don't fully understand, or or, or even just a comment, uh, the other way that you can leave that would be to email us at Keto Man's Club Podcast at gmail.com. So you've got a couple ways that you can reach us. Uh, you can also get to our website at theketomansclub.com. So there's a lot of different options for you to be able to reach out to us. Currently, that website leads to the Facebook group, which is a great place to get in contact with uh, the three of us hosts, as well as uh, several thousand, a couple thousand men that uh, really are uh, doing uh, really great things uh, for themselves and helping each other become even bigger, uh, even better. Okay, so that pretty much handles all of our preliminary business, and let's jump on into our interview. We've held uh, him long enough. Today, we are honored by our uh, Facebook group Facebook group member, Joey Palacios, uh, who is uh, going to join us and share his story with us. So, Joey, welcome. Thank you for coming on. Um, Thanks for having me. So let's, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's let's start out with just the really, you know, the basic stuff. Who are you? Kind of where did you come from? Uh, tell us the beginning of your story, if you would. So I am a lifelong South Central Texan. Grew up in San Antonio. I'm 32 right now, and I have been a lifelong fat kid. Um, that is up until recently. So uh, I am. I've been doing keto for about five months, and I have lost about fifty-five pounds since then. Um, I uh, my heaviest. I was about three hundred and two pounds, and that was three years ago. And um, I am one pound away from no longer being considered obese. So I'm at two sixteen right now. And once you get to two fifteen from my height, according to the arbitrariness that is BMI, I'll just be overweight <laughs> instead of obese. <laughs> oh, to be overweight. Um, you know right? <laughs> awesome. Uh, so let's uh, do, you, well, let me, let me ask Jim Alberto, do you have any other questions uh, about the, the start of all this from, from him? Not at all. I mean, congratulations. First of all, I mean, you're down total of dang near 75 pounds. Is that right? Yeah, about about it. I think it's so, somewhere between like like seventy five, eighty two, somewhere around there. And I've I've kind of lost count, but I just know I'm about fifteen yeah, yeah. or so pounds away from being a hundred pounds down over the past four years. Mm. Wow. So you said that you were a big kid, you know, all through growing up and everything like that. Was is it a family thing? Because you know sometimes people will say, oh, all of a, all of my family are big people or whatever kind of thing. Any idea? about why you struggled with your your size growing up well it's i i i I probably didn't didn't start gaining weight until maybe four or five years old uh i found out around that time that uh, i was an asthmatic and uh, my fat my doctor had to put me on all these steroids to help keep it under control and so like come six seven eight years old i just start like ballooning up and then um, I don't even know like how much I weighed in middle school. I just remember a doctor telling me that I was gaining like a pound a week and, um, Oh my the, gosh. Yeah. So, you know, I was, I was always a fat kid. Um, but I started to really try to lose weight, I guess around 15 or 16. And I was probably starting out maybe around 260 or so, uh, I, as far back as I can remember, at least I'm not sure the exact weight, but I remember getting down 
to like 219 when I was 17 years old. And um, that was probably the lowest weight I've ever been until right now. And through college and through my late 20s, I... I, I probably yo-yoed more than Oprah, you know, as many times as, mm-hmm. uh, as, as, as back and forth as, as she has gone as well. Uh, but my heaviest was probably around, oh, let me see, I guess 20, I was probably 28, 29. I hope I'm getting my years right. Uh, yeah, 28, 29, uh, when I was about 302 pounds. And um, over the course of like three years, I just lost 25 pounds for one reason or another. It's just, it, it yo-yoed. Um, the only reason I really know that I was 300 is that's when I actually bought uh, a smart scale, which I actually, uh, the same one that I still have. And uh, periodically I was logging my weight, making efforts, trying to, to lose weight and it worked. And then I would go back up, go back down, go back up, go back down. And it um it it was kind of around that time in 2014 uh, that I was diagnosed as a diabetic. So uh, mm. I didn't didn't take it very seriously. I, I I can get into more into that later, but uh, I, uh, I I I didn't really start taking weight loss like very very seriously um, until like a liver scare that I had back in December, which my liver doctor is the one that actually said you should try keto, and I was like, well. I had tried keto once before around uh, maybe 2012. I was I was bike riding a lot. I was able to get down to like 250 pounds in 2012. And then I tried keto for like two weeks. I lost like maybe maybe 12 pounds or so. And then I stopped and then everything ballooned back up again until I uh, until 2015 when I got to my highest and started taking things seriously back in December. So even so even with uh being a bigger guy, you were still doing physical activity. You mentioned biking earlier. You yeah. weren't a, a total couch potato, so to speak. No, and and it was always like intermittent. Like I would take physical activity kind of seriously, and then I would get bored and stop. And then uh, I I was I I had this notion in my mind that you know if I want to lose weight, I have to be physically active and come to find out now that, you know, doing keto for the last five months, you don't have to be as physically active for keto to work, um, as, as, um, as other weight, uh, as other weight loss plans do. Uh, like I've had Mm -hmm. very minimal exercise, maybe like once or twice a week at the, over the past five months. Um, it's only until it's only in the past, maybe two weeks I've actually started to, to get to the gym pretty regularly. Great. Did you ever specifically try any specific diets or was it all just kind of completely random? It was completely random. Like I I had a personal trainer for a little bit. We'd meet like twice a week. Um, As far as he he tried to put me on a diet that was uh, just very lean. Uh, It had carbohydrates. It had a lot of chicken, a lot of tuna. Um, a lot of Greek yogurt, a lot of, uh, of, of high protein, low fat, moderate carbs. And I, I, I didn't really see like much of a difference there. Uh, I just know that I was hungry all the damn time. So, um, <laughs> well, that one, that wasn't like too motivating for me. Um, but it's, it's been kind of just different things. Like in 2012, I was cycling a lot, probably at least two or three times a week. And I lost about maybe 20, 30 pounds doing that. And that's when I stopped and started gaining everything back, as I mentioned a moment ago. Um, yeah. And uh, it's, it's been interesting seeing my, my smart scale just go up and down uh, over like the past three, four years, just kind of like seeing all the peaks and valleys of, of times that I had tried and time, times that I had succeeded and times that I had failed and times that I'd given up and then tried again. Cool. So when you found out about keto, Mm -hmm. um, was it like light out of heaven type inspiration or what was that like, uh, digging into it for the first time? Um, the first time when I did it in, you know, in 2012, I, uh, it, 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 it was pretty manageable. Um, and I, I was impressed at how, how fast it was working because I had lost, you know, 10, 12 pounds, uh, within the course of two weeks, but I just didn't keep up with it. I, I, I can't remember why I stopped, but, um, I was like, okay, cool. Well, maybe I could, I've, I've lost like 10 pounds. Maybe I can take a break. Well, that break didn't stop. Um, this time, um, when I started keto, uh, this was December 17th. I was 274 pounds by 
a week later, December 23rd, I had gone down to 262. And I was like, I was floored because I didn't think in a week I would lose that much weight. Now, initially people say that that's, you know, that's, that's water weight, which I understood. So I kind of took it with a grain of salt and I said, you know, let me keep going. So I, I did a little bit of indulging on Christmas, but then on the, December 26th, I went straight back in. Uh, by the end of the month, I was probably, I think like maybe, maybe about the same still to, to maybe 260. Um, uh, by the end of January, I had lost another 19 pounds and I could not believe how and I was doing super strict keto at that point. Like I, I didn't, didn't want to touch a carbohydrate. And um, since then, it's been kind of an average of maybe like seven to nine pounds a month. But, you know, my, my first like 45 days, it was, it was I probably lost at least like 30 pounds. Um, so it's, for me, it worked incredibly fast in the beginning. That's just crazy. Now, um, you said you had a smart scale and that uh, you were, you know, reasonably consistently stepping on it. So did, is it hooked up to an app where you could actually track your progress over time? Yeah. Um, I think the brand, the brand of the scale when I bought it was Withings. Um, th they got bought out by Nokia. So the app now is Nokia HealthMate and um, it uploads it to my phone uh, probably within like 10, 15 seconds after I step off the scale. Um, so I, I, I weigh myself probably about uh, at least once a day. Fantastic. So you can speak to daily weight fluctuations given oh, God, uh, like yes. trends over time. Like you've been tracking once, let's just, let's just say once a day for a good while now. Uh, why don't you comment on what you're seeing on a scale as far as day-to-day -day weight fluctuation and why it does or does not matter compared to a, a trend over a longer period of time? So like that's the nail on the head. The trend is the most important part because, you know, I can step on the scale. I'm okay. I remember when I, in one point where I got kind of frustrated, um, I was, I, I was 243 and I had stepped on the scale the next day and it jumped up to 246 and I was like, okay, what is happening? And I had like little fluctuations, maybe like a pound or so. And, you know, I figured, you know, that's water, that's, you know, whatever's left in my system. But it was that like 243 that like kind of pissed me off. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, that 246 that kind of pissed me off. And I was like, okay, well, what's happening? And then a couple of days later, I was down, I'd lost supposedly, according to the scale, five pounds. I was at 241. And I was like, okay, maybe this is kind of common. And uh, I, I noticed like certain things that I would eat would, you know, kind of make it go up a little bit. And then it would, it would always still go back down. Um, another example, this past week, um, I was at, oh, two, but maybe, maybe like maybe uh, 10 days ago, I was probably like 217. And, um, I had, I'd had a few carbs cause I was feeling pretty good. I think I thought things were going great. And then I, and then I, um, I, uh, Friday I had gotten into a, uh, into a car accident. It was a hit and run and it, it kind of stressed me out. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go get some tacos. So I went to this place, had like maybe I gorged. I think I probably ate like, oh man, eight or nine, like mini tacos, maybe 10. And then I noticed like, uh, uh the, the next day, I think, you know, maybe a couple more carbs weren't hurt. When I stepped on the scale, I think on Monday, it went up to like 222. And then when I stepped on this morning after, after being strict again, I, I, I haven't eaten anything with carbs over the past few days. I'm, I'm back down to 217. So it, it's going to fluctuate, especially like when you eat carbohydrates. That's but but in my experience, as, as much as it as it goes up and down and up and down, the actual trend has been consistently down. So I I tell people you're going to lose and gain weight within like confusing amounts within like short periods of time. Just watch how things go down over time because you know it's it's going to take maybe about a week or so before you actually see like progress uh on the scale as you started out on 
keto mm-hmm. um, in those early days, and you said you you know you drop like thirty some pounds over six seven week period. How about mm-hmm. um, inches, body? I mean, shirts, pants. Were they were they dropping off of you quickly, or did you did you see the number on the scale drop faster than the inches dropped? I I saw the the scale. I feel like drop because I was I, I I've taken pictures and like on 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 weight milestones. So like maybe every five or ten pounds or something and and i noticed that i didn't really see like too much from my stomach or from my chest or anything dropping out um it probably wasn't until i had lost close to 30 pounds that i really saw the difference between pictures and um even more so when i i guess when i got up maybe to 40 pounds uh maybe even close to 50 when i started doing like profile shots that i actually saw the difference in my body and probably where I hadn't been like looking hard enough is I lost more weight out of my legs and out of my ass, probably anywhere else, probably more than anywhere else. <laughs> Cause, uh, and I had posted a, a kind of a, a back and forth video or before and after video in the, in the keto man's club group. Um, and you can see like, cause I'm, I'm wearing the same underwear in the picture and you can see like, you know, my, my fat ass in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the first pick. And then it's just like, it practically deflates, <laughs> in in the second one and um it probably wasn't until maybe um I, I guess two months ago that i really saw the like the the stuff in, in my stomach and my chest um in pants it it happened uh pretty noticeably because i i was a size 44 when i started um i would say probably by the end of january i i had to go down to like a 40 and i you're talking you're talking a waist size correct a waist size yeah okay. and i remember going to a thrift store um maybe maybe this was uh, in february i can't remember the exact day uh I'm pretty sure it was February because I have all this stuff logged on my Instagram, but I put on a pair of size 38s and I was like, holy, they fit. Um, (laughs) I don't, I have not been in a size 48, 38 rather until, um, Oh, probably. I think the last time I was at, I was at 38 was probably when I graduated high school. Um, and (laughs) two maybe maybe three weeks ago um my uh my boyfriend and i went to uh of all of all he, he wanted to go to a forever 21 and he handed me a pair of 36 jeans and said go try these on and i'm like these aren't gonna fit and i go to the fitting room and they fit and i was like oh my god <laughs> So, so you uh, start screaming in the store and everybody's like, what is going on? And you're like, Kino. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I, you know, he said, they're only 20 bucks. Get them. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I, we bought the jeans and, and, um, I, he, he wears a medium shirt and, um, I tried one of his shirts on and it fits. And so now I, I can remember buy that. Medium that was shirts awesome. With, I, extra I, mediums, bro. I can, extra mediums. <laughs> right? <laughs> like now he and I can almost almost share clothes, which because he's much smaller than I am. And uh, like like in height, I think he's a good maybe six inches shorter than me. And um, and it's, it's kind of crazy because now that I think about it, I'm actually wearing one of his shirts right now. Um, <laughs> so it's 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 I, I'm, I'm just amazed at how fast like everything has happened. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's one of those things that I, I never probably thought that I would ever be like that. And now, granted, I got these at Walmart, so I think their sizes are a little skewed. But I intentionally got a pair of like cotton like jersey shorts in a size medium, which was supposed to be like thirty four, thirty six, mm-hmm. or maybe even a thirty two, thirty four. And I'm wearing them right now, and they fit. They're great. Um, I don't think I ever would have, and I've got some medium shirts that I've got that actually somewhat fit. Uh, mm-hmm. My problem is my shoulders are really wide, and so <laughs> regardless of of the size of shirt, I'll probably always be in a large, just maybe cut like tapered. Uh, but yeah, those are the the type of visual or felt victories that do not show up on the scale. 
And that uh, is, if anything, the message that I would take away from that, that particular part of our discussion is the scale is such a small part of the overall puzzle um, for, for all of us. I get more excited about uh, the non-scale victories just, just because it's, it's so much more um, apparent and it feels like a, just a, a bigger victory um, than, than, you know, cause I kind of expect the scale to, to go down um, or potentially go back up. But the fact that, you know, I can fit in the clothes I never thought I was going to be able to fit in um, is, is pretty damn awesome. Yeah. So what has your health and health improvement been like since you went on keto this, this time around, what type of markers have you tracked or have you had any blood work or any type of results uh, that have shown any marked uh, change yeah. in all of that? Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, my, um, the reason I, I started keto was, um, and I'll go into a little bit of backstory. Uh, I, I became a diabetic and it was, it was March 20, March, um, or sorry, March 19th of 2014. And I was at the threshold of being a diabetic. My test came back um, with my A1C uh, being 6.5, which for those unfamiliar, an A1C is basically a three-month average of your blood sugars. Um, mine was at 6.5, and uh, that is when you are considered a diabetic. Um, so my doctor put me on metformin. Uh, I, I didn't really take it very seriously, and that's kind of about the time that I really started to balloon up come 2015 or just, just short of 2015, um, I had to go to the hospital because of a back spasm and, you know, they did some blood work and my A1C in that short amount of time, that nine months since I'd been diagnosed had jumped up to an 11, which, uh, that if you maintain for a long time will absolutely damage your organs. Um, so they put me on more medication and, uh, fast forward now, I, I probably, I got my A1C down to like, uh, I think maybe a, an eight or so. And I maintained that for, for a while. Um, I, in December, uh, my endocrinologist had basically seen some weird like activity in my liver and he already knew like, well, you have, you probably have fatty liver because your liver enzymes come off a little weird, but you have this other thing showing up, um, he said I may have been born. Um, well, I he, he referred me to a liver doctor. I went to the liver doctor, and he said, um, you know, you have fatty liver, um, which could lead to cirrhosis, and cirrhosis is actually what took down my uh, my grandfather. Um, but he said you potentially might have been born with autoimmune hepatitis based on this chart. And I was like, what? And he said, uh, you know, if you have it, uh, there's not really anything that we can do about it, but we have to do some tests because we can manage it, but there's no cure for it. And um, he said, what you need to do now first is get your fatty liver under control. And he said, try the keto diet. Um, you know, I hear it has good results. Uh, you're a diabetic, so you should be doing low carb anyway. Give it a shot. And I was a little familiar with it. Um, three days later, I had I had it. Uh, three days later, I had an appointment with my endocrinologist again. Told him what the liver doctor had told me, and uh, he had said, you know, keto would be very good for you. And he referred me to a website called dietdoctor.com. And I know that sounds like a real gimmicky name, um, but it's uh, run by this another an endocrinologist that focuses on diabetes and low carb. And it was a really, it was a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a good website and it, it helped me learn a little bit um, as I started out. So uh, that's when I started. And in March, uh, well, while I, while I was starting keto, I had to go through more tests to check on the liver. Um, but I wouldn't get the results for like months. But in March, uh, when I had gone down, I'd already lost maybe close to 40 pounds. Um, March 19th, the same five years, five years after I was diagnosed a diabetic, I went in, uh, to, uh, see the endocrinologist and, uh, they basically told me that because I had been eating low carb, that my A1C was now in the levels of being normal, of, of no longer like of, of being uh, non-diabetic. Uh, so I know this is a very long story and I apologize, but the, uh, no, you're my, good. <laughs> my A1C in December was 7.8. 
when I went to the doctor in March, it was 5.8, which is a, it's a it's a two point drop. Now, one of the caveats is that I am still on my diabetes medica- medication. I'm on I'm on three. One is metformin. One is Jardiance, which everybody's on metformin. That's if you're diabetic. And then there's Jardiance, um, which um, actually helps my body manage any excess blood sugar by by passing it out through the kidneys. And then also uh, I'm on a I'm on a once a week um, injectable called Trulicity, and that's supposed to help um, protect the pancreas and a few other things, um, and uh, also helps with hunger. So 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 I'm told. But anyway, my goal right now is to get off of those medications, um, which I have a diabetes appointment uh, next month. So I'm hoping you know they'll tell me, yeah, you can get off this one. So that's my, that's my goal. Um, as far as the liver, I went back in April and my liver enzyme at the time, I think this was, uh, the ALT, which helps, I really designate, uh, whether or not you have fatty liver. Um, the, it was at 63, which for that particular lab that did it, that did the results, their threshold of being high is at 50. When I went back to the, to the, um, the liver doctor in April. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it was April. Excuse me. When I went back to the liver doctor, uh, he told me that my 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 liver function test was a 10. So it had dropped 53 points. Holy cow! Yeah, 53 points. And wow. he said, like, yeah, that that you you as far as liver enzymes are concerned, you're fine. Um, I thankfully do not have autoimmune hepatitis. They figured that out through through an MRI that I did uh, through the testing um, that I, I don't have any scarring of the liver. When I got the test results back, this this from a scan that they did in December. So I had to go through the MRI. They put this vibrating paddle on my on my midsection, and I was in this cramped thing for like you know a good forty minutes or so. That test came back where my liver said it had 35% fat and it, um, the normal range for people is about 6%. So I had about five times more fat in my liver than I, than a normal person would. Um, I don't know what that percentage is at right now because, um, I won't have another test like that until October. Um, and but the doctor said like it's probably it's most likely gone down because of the amount of weight that you've lost but we have to wait a while to to for your body to normalize and uh just maintain what you're doing and and keep your weight low and things should be fine so we'll uh, see in about i guess what four five months uh, what those results say, but yeah, I know that was kind of a, a long story, but it's, it's been the, that's, that's the reason I started keto and it has definitely proved it, proved itself, um, that it works. Um, I, I had a cholesterol check, um, back in March and it came slightly like just borderline of like being, you know, kind of high according to the doctor but they said as long as you know that i maintain proper eating that i i eat the better fats and stuff that it should be fine but you know i've heard people on keto say that you know they they eat the 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 heavy meats and things and their cholesterol is fine so i'll find out more on that next month so we'll we'll see where the cholesterol is at yeah that's really really awesome i'm i'm I, I've made no no qualms about it. I'm on TRT, so my blood work gets done fairly regularly, at least every six months. And mm-hmm. so I've, throughout the two years that I've been keto, I've been able to have some some good biomarkers and, and, and things like that. And it's really, really cool to me to see in black and white numbers, measurables, mm-hmm. uh, the... Uh, the things that are changing on the inside of my body because of the food that I'm taking in and the things that I'm not taking in, which is Mm -hmm. probably more important. Mm -hmm. Um, And then to rewind to your diet doctor thing, that was actually one of the first resources that I ended up using was was diet doctor. (laughs) And, and I think my favorite thing, and I still reference it sometimes to this day is their visual food charts of like all the vegetables and which ones are high and low carb and how much they 
are per a certain amount of grams. And that helped me so much to be able to look at the produce section and say, okay, what can I actually have here? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, so, it's great. Yeah. I love that website. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's a really powerful yet simple resource for sure. Um, Alberto, we haven't heard from you for a little bit. What you? Got? Oh, I got I got questions. Uh, first of all, did you ever get them pork rinds? <laughs> oh no, I didn't. I, I didn't want to put my money back into the vending machine and you know risk it getting stuck again. <laughs> so, like like a dumbass, I I I called the number on the vending machine trying to get my money back. <laughs> And um, the the lady on the other end said, "Oh well, you have to go to building management. They'll they'll give you they'll give you uh, the, your change back, which is in like another building in our complex." So I was like, "You know what? Fine. I got ten minutes. I walk all the way to the building management <laughs> office, and they're locked. They're closed. They're gone for the day." <laughs> I was mad, and so I called the lady back, and I said, "Hey, they're not there. You know." She said, "Well, we have a delivery driver going by. We can try to get your money back uh, and just pull it out of the thing." uh, and, uh, out of the till or whatever. And I said, um, well, I, I'd actually use my credit card on the vending machine. And she goes, Oh, well, if the, if the, <laughs> she said, Oh, if the item didn't drop, it's not going to charge you anyway, because there's a sensor. So I was like, I just walked all over like the complex <laughs> this office for, my, for the office park to try to get like my 90 something cents back. And, you know, I'll wait to see if I get it. That but no, I did not get my hilarious. pork rinds and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you you had mentioned that obviously that you were a kind of a doctor appointed keto uh-huh. and that they recommended it for you and obviously they weren't too concerned about your cholesterol but I mean you've lost a ton of weight obviously um, I wanted you to share your macros or uh, you know because there are many different ways to approach keto I want I want you to just talk a little bit about uh, the method that you use and the method you were recommended by your doctors to use to get this weight down what were your macros like. Uh, what was and or is a day of your eating like now? Okay. So I hate calorie counting. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Amen. Um, Amen. <laughs> so I have not been counting calories, but as far as macros, I was mostly eyeballing it. I didn't, I, I kind of plotted it out. I used uh, my fitness pal at first. I was logging some of the food that I had, I had eaten. Okay. Well that has this many carbs or that has this much fat. Um, and I probably did that for like maybe two weeks or so, um, off and on. Um, but for the most part, I was, I was just eyeballing it. Um, I wish I had taken like more pictures of what I was eating at the beginning. Um, but like the first week, the first, uh, the, the first, uh, oh man, I, I, I kind of want to get into the whole keto flu thing, but I'll talk about the macros first. The um, I I'm pretty sure that um, before I started keto, I was probably eating well over three thousand to thirty five hundred calories probably a day. Um, once, and I'm, I'm just real quick, uh-huh. were you a were you a snacker? Were you like constantly grazing eating kind of thing, or did you eat two three big meals kind of thing? How did you it, how did you do do that? At, at the worst stage, so to speak. Both. <laughs> I, I ate okay. a lot. I, I ate just, you know, I would eat my, my three big meals and then, you know, it, it's, I, I may work for a radio station, but you know, it's like any other office. It's like, there's just food. Food just magically appears. And like, you know, there might be a cookie there. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to eat the damn cookie. Uh, now I don't eat the damn cookie. Um, the, I, 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 so my, my guess, okay. Yeah. Okay. I can tell you what I was eating before when like, uh, when I would go to work, I would go through, um, this taco place and get a, um, uh, two tacos with one would be papas and chorizo. And then the other would be uh bean and egg. And so I'd probably do that maybe like two or three times a week for lunch. Um, if I didn't bring uh, a lunch, uh, which would usually have like rice or chicken or something like that, um, I would probably go get like some pad thai from a place like nearby. And then dinner was, was, um, like usually a big meal at home, um, or, uh, we'd go out to eat, uh, somewhere. I really, I really didn't pay any attention to, to calories. I would just, if it was in front of me, I would just eat it. Um, I, once I started doing keto, I, I had to have been eating probably maybe I'm just going to guess maybe 1800 to 2000 calories a day. So a huge, huge, huge drop 
just by the just by cutting carbs and i realized how many carbohydrates were in my diet um if i had to guess i was probably eating north of three four maybe 500 carbs a day um maybe i'm exaggerating a bit i don't know exactly how much but um after going down to like 20 carbs. So maybe back to your back to your macros question, Alberto. The uh, like I was probably doing 20 carbs or so a day, maybe 25. Um, fats. Uh, I'd probably say that was 60 percent of what I was eating, and then everything else was protein. Um, then my my first week, the first keto meal that I made was squash and zucchini, just sautéed in a pan. Uh, some some chicken some chicken legs and thighs that I, that I got from HEB and put in the oven and cauliflower rice. Um, and it was pretty good. So I made a bunch of it and packed that up for lunch for work every day. Um, and then I had enough over that I would just eat it for dinner too. Um, I had bacon and eggs usually for breakfast. Uh, then I would have the chicken and the cauliflower rice and the squash. And um, then I had the same thing for dinner the, the, that night. But something kind of weird happened on Tuesday uh, of that week. Um, because I had started on a Sunday, and uh, the, the by Tuesday, when lunch came around, I didn't want to look at my food. I was not hungry. I did not want to eat. Um, but I realized, you know, I should probably eat something. So I ate the chicken. I didn't want to eat the cauliflower rice. Then when dinner came around, I was not hungry in any way, shape, or form. Like, uh, and, and I didn't want to eat the next day either. Um, so I, I think, uh, I, I, I think that was one of the things of the keto flu or, or maybe I was eating enough fat to where I wasn't hungry. I don't know why, but like the first week I was like, I don't want to eat anything. And I, that's kind of when I thought, okay, you know, this, this may, this may actually work if this is, if, if I don't get hungry anymore. Cause that was one of the reasons I would eat so much is I was constantly hungry, or at least my brain told me I was hungry. Maybe it was just the carbs trying to, to trick me into eating more carbs. For sure. Uh, you, yeah, the, the, there's so many different mechanical things happening in your body that hunger, especially on a carb based, uh, diet is not actually hunger most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, uh, let's, uh, talk about your, your physical activity now, what, and maybe com compare it to before you, you said that you were active. Are you as active now, less active? Are you, has that changed what, what, uh, as far as which activities, what, what does that look like for you? I, I'm more active now than I was maybe like two months ago. Um, I've been trying to get to the gym at least three times a week um, over the past uh, three weeks or so. Um, I, I'm doing about an hour on the treadmill or an hour uh, running. Um, and I, I, I post those uh, on my, on my Instagram. Oh, excuse me. And um and uh, I, I try to I, I I go as far as I can and run I run as fast as I can uh, for about uh, for an hour and um, I was kind of amazed because my my boyfriend and I had gone out for a run down a trail um, and I was able to do a mile this is the first time I had tried running since actually losing like fifty pounds but I was able to do a mile in under in under fifteen minutes and I was like holy. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> um, and I was like, whoa. And, and so, you know, I tried to push myself and I, I don't think I got under the 15 minute mark for the, for the second and the, and the third mile, which is fine. Um, and then, you know, I was like, I, I, I kind of like to try to push myself. I, I kind of like to be competitive with myself, I guess. Um, and so I went to the gym a couple of days later and, and I was able to get the first mile in under 13 minutes. And I was like, yes. And then the next, and then, um, the next time I went, I was a little slower. I don't, I don't, I, I think, I think I didn't make anything. Um, uh, this was one like two weeks ago. I don't think I made any improvement, uh, on that. Um, I was able recently, um, I think maybe last week or the week before to do four miles in an hour. Um, I think, I think I actually went, uh, 4.22 miles. So that was about, uh, 15 minutes, uh, per, per mile. Um, and then, uh, yesterday, uh, at the gym, I did a mile in about, uh, 11 and a half minutes. So I, I, uh, uh, my ability to be to do physical activity has I, I I only have a couple of weeks to go off of it right now, but I I feel like it's skyrocketed, and that's because you know I don't have all this extra fat anymore that's like you know slowing me down. I I I if I really really try to push myself, I'm pretty sure 
that, uh, well, maybe I'm pretty sure that I can get to a 10 minute mile, uh, which is, uh, you know, from what I've read is the, uh, what somebody with moderate running skill and average body shape is able to do a 10 minute mile. So kind of making that a goal. I don't, We'll see. We'll see how long it takes to get there. And I want to do weights, but I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea where to start. So when I see the the post from uh, from Chris and Alberto, it's kind of a some good motivation for me. So I appreciate that. If you find yourself <laughs> 90 minutes north, man. Let us know. We'll take care of that. Yeah, we're absolutely, we're absolutely. Right. Yeah, abs- absolutely. Uh, Alberto has definitely uh, helped me in a lot of ways in correcting my form and getting the most out of my, my lifting. I, I did a whole like 10 week cycle with a template and I just kind of researched things and fuddled through on my own. And I feel like in the last three weeks I've made more strides than that whole 10 weeks because uh, I've had some, some help. I've also had a, a partner there kind of, you know, root me on, uh, mm-hmm. which is always good. But yeah, next time that you're up in Austin um, early morning, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll take you to the gym and uh, put you through the paces and that's gonna gonna help for sure I know that feeling of not having a clue though that it's such a uh, it's such a real thing for sure uh, because you, you look at all those dumbbells and all the, the plates and all the, the barbells and you go I'm supposed to lift those and how <laughs> yeah, you know, because I, I I get into the weight area, and then you know I see these real like buff and jacked guys like you know doing it like it's nothing, and they 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 know exactly what they need to do, and I'm there like on the leg press, sitting back, just like doing okay, let me do like like three sets of ten or whatever, and then I'm like okay, well what do I do now? So that's that's kind of <laughs> where I am at the moment, and hopefully you know within the next uh, few weeks or few months I'll have a better idea. But yeah, I would love sure. to you guys up there sometimes so yeah, yeah. yeah hey, like cool. press is a good machine to start on man you, you know you, you picked yeah. a good one so. <laughs> cool hey joey um mm-hmm. one thing that i want to ask about is um friends family people who as you are doing this keto thing and dropping inches and you're eating steak and all this other stuff what was the reaction were people supportive were people like how is this happening or just were you getting the support uh, that you needed? I mean, obviously you were accomplishing things, but were the people around you cheering you on as well? So I, I would post a few things on Facebook initially when I, when I, when I lost the, that's for the first week when I lost like 12 pounds or so I made a post about it. I was like, okay, this is actually, this might, this is working pretty cool. Um, I understand it's just water weight. And, you know, I had, I had some friends comment and ask, you know, oh, well, what are you doing? How can I do it too? I have a, a friend who's a trainer and he said like, dude, keto doesn't work, man. It's not, it's what you're seeing is water weight. It's not a long-term thing. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of just brushed it off. And, um, I, uh, I, I started, I, I would probably post something on Facebook every, every week, maybe every couple of weeks, just like, Oh yeah, this progress is kind of cool. It, 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 and then I, I made a, I made my Instagram, uh, to track everything, uh, towards the end of January. Um, the, when people, I think really started to like notice, uh, like the weight loss, I would say around mid January or so. Um, so about a month in, um, part because, uh, I had made a, a, a picture showing, um, you know, me at my heaviest, me when I started keto and me at the middle of January, which was 300 pounds, 275 and 250. So 25 pound difference, like for each of those. And, um, I, it was after that, that I actually saw like people, um, that I hadn't seen in a while that would be like, wait, are you losing weight? Um, or, and then, you know, they would ask like what I was doing. Um, and, uh, I, I, I think like people started getting like, like really amazed when I probably hit like the 40 or so pound mark that, that people started seeing like a drastic difference. And my inbox on, on Facebook was just like filled with, with friends asking, you know, well, how, how can I get involved or where do you suggest I start? Um, so I started writing a guide and I, I, I guess I'm like halfway done with it and it's already like 15 pages of everything that I've, I've been doing or haven't been doing, but, uh, uh, so I'm hopefully going to finish that up, that up soon. I think I went off on a tangent, so I'm sorry if I, if I got away from no, the original question. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. 
And I and I'm gonna and I'm gonna piggyback on that also. Tell us real quick about um, how, do you recall how you found the Keto Man's Club and what you enjoy about being in the group? Oh, dude, it's awesome. Okay, so um, I think it was one of the first groups that I that I joined um, there because I just I I think I just typed into Facebook, you know, Keto Men, and sure enough, Keto Man's Club was a, was the first one that came up. So so I joined it. I, I can't remember exactly when I joined. Um, Mm -hmm. and then there were other groups that I, that I joined just to take a, to, to look at, uh, one is keto San Antonio, which is, which is a pretty good group. I I like it. There's a lot Mm -hmm. of, a lot of good, uh, uh, suggestions, especially like locally, you know, go check out this place. Mm -hmm. They, the, they'll, they'll accommodate for keto. Um, there are other groups. The lady who organizes keto, the the Mm -hmm. lady that organizes keto San Antonio invited me to, to join it. And she's a firecracker. She's on, in fact, right now she's on magazine shelves sharing her story, like literally printed magazines, uh, for women's health, something or other. Uh, she, she is on magazine shelves and in grocery stores everywhere sharing her story. It's really, really cool. That's Um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, there, there are other groups though. There are other keto groups that just are terrible. Like I think I was in one group called, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I'll call, I, I don't know if I want to say the name because the mods were pretty cool. It's just like some, just some of the things that were posted was either like bot spam, you know, posts that said, Oh, I'm, f- I just want to let everybody know I'm five years sober today, but like, you know, 15 people posting the same thing. It's, it's obviously <laughs> a bot or something like that. And then right. there are people that, that, that go in and they go in the first time and they say, I know nothing about keto. Um, you know, tell me what I should do. And, you know, and then, and, and that's, that's fine to like to, to ask, but like, you know, I, I, I feel people would be better served for themselves if they go out and, and start to learn and educate themselves and, and just like Google it and things like that. Um, cause posts like that can end up making like a group kind of cluttered. And that's why, that's why I left that, that particular group. Um, and one of the things that I really, really love about, um, the keto men's club is that you can really be open and talk about things that you wouldn't talk publicly. Like I, I, I posted my underwear picture in the keto man's club when I wouldn't, when I probably wouldn't do that to my main Facebook page. I haven't, I haven't even done that like on my Insta, um, or, or one, one thing that I really, really appreciate is that, um, like y'all were mentioning at the beginning that, you know, guys can come in there and kind of be like, just, just raw about like what's happening in their life. Um, I've seen, I've seen guys be open to talk about uh, depression, be open to talk about marital issues. Um, and I, I feel like publicly, you know, maybe a lot of guys aren't able to do that. Um, but that it's a little, it's, it's easier, uh, to talk about one with one with a group of guys and two um, with a group of guys that, that know some of the same like struggle you're going through, like with dietary or the same, some of the, some of the same frustrations. So there's kind of like this camaraderie there. Uh, well, not like, I mean, there is a camaraderie there where I feel like people are, uh, are where guys are much more like open to share and talk about and, and even things that like uh, that, that, you know, people want to talk about, um, uh, being regular if you know what i mean um <laughs> where, where, you know, we all do yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so you know I, that's something that i would feel more comfortable posting about in there than i would generally out there for the for the public right. so it's it's definitely a, a space that that i am very comfortable posting things and there and, and and speaking my mind because as a mm-hmm. as as a reporter, I don't really get to speak my mind on a lot of things. So just being able to even even just like uh, bitch about something would be <laughs> it's kind of nice. Yep. <laughs> so tell us, um, or 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 let's let's kind of rewind the clock. This is one of my favorite questions that I think I ask uh, each one of our our guests is if you could speak to yourself. At 18 years old, whenever you're diagnosed as, as diabetic or you're just your past self in the unhealthy state that you're in, uh-huh. knowing the things that you know now, what would you tell yourself? Uh, largely from the idea that there is probably someone out there that is in that same spot and they need to hear that same encouragement, that same information. So what would you share with that person? To uh, I would go back to 2012 and tell myself that you know don't stop keto 
keep going with it because I remember, I re- like, like I remember the week when I saw the progress there and I was like, well, you know, I can probably come back to it. I never went back to it. I never said, you know, well, I can start again at any time. And I just never started again. Uh, why not never? Cause obviously I restarted about five months ago, but um, I would go back and say like right there, you know, do it now. Um, one, because you're, you're younger and it'll be, it'll be easier and you can, you know, you have the time to incorporate physical activity now. Um, granted, gosh, that was like what seven years ago. Now I, I feel like I'm always busy and trying to get to the gym is is, is difficult. Um, back then I had more time to do it, um, and I I would give myself that warning. You know, if you don't stop, you're if you don't get things under control, you're gonna become a diabetic, which I had been warned my whole life. Like my 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 maternal grandfather was diabetic. My uh, both of my grandparents on my dad's side are diabetic. It runs in my family I'm on both on both sides. So I just really didn't take it seriously because I don't I didn't really take I didn't think you know this is my na- naivety. I didn't think that diabetes was was that serious. You know you have that you have the the sugars or you know it's you know, you can just eat sweet and low. It's a complex disease. And it mm. it really takes a toll if you don't get it under control. And if I had gotten it under control, I wouldn't have to be paying for these medications. You know, I have insurance and it, and it's affordable. But you know, that's money that I could be saving to use for other things. Um, it's it's doctor's appointments that I wouldn't have to go to. Um, it's 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 um, it's it would have been. And I'm not I'm not saying my quality of life is bad. I mean, I I. I, th- I think life is great, but I, I would have, I would not have to worry about being diabetic if, you know, I had gone back at some point or, or said, you know, keep going, keep your weight down because it's, it's going to come back to, to bite you in the ass if you don't. Um, so kind of a long answer to your question, but I, I would go back sure. and say like, you know, if you do not get this under control in two years, you're going to be diabetic and you need to, and it sucks. <laughs> Uh, granted, my my diabetes has has been vastly more manageable than most. My blood sugars have, uh, I I'd say you know they probably got up into at its highest. They probably got into the to the high two hundreds, but you know I I've heard of people that have blood sugars in the three hundreds and four hundreds, and you know there's they they try everything and they can't get it down. I. I, I think I was I was luckier than most that I was able to get on on um, on on medication and and you know some some type of management almost as soon as I, I crossed the diabetic threshold. But there are people that go years years and years without realizing they're diabetic, and by then they already have problems with their kidneys. They already have problems uh, like their their pancreas is is already tired and they have to go on insulin i'm i'm blessed that i don't have to be on insulin um and it, it's i was gonna ask that so uh-huh. yeah you yeah that's good yeah so i'm not i'm uh, there was there was one point where my doctor said that um or technically this was the pa but whatever she uh she she's really cool um she had said like yeah if if, if we don't get it if, if if you don't start taking your medicine regularly and we get this really under control uh the doctor's probably going to put you on insulin at uh you know before bed every day so um, if you, you should keep that and I can't remember when that was maybe, maybe 2016 or so or something like that. But, you know, it's, it's, I, I've been fortunate now that, that, um, that I've been able to get it to, to manage it to where, um, there's, I don't have any damage to my eyes. I don't have any damage to my, uh, to my, uh, uh, uh any other organs. I, I do feel like that at some point, like the, the tingling that, that you get in your feet as a diabetic, I mean, that was pretty severe. Um, so, uh, Hopefully, I've I've saved my foot twenty years from now um, mm-hmm. by by doing this now. Because if I if I if I God forbid if I ever do become overweight again, uh, which I hell in high water, I'm going to keep that from happening. Um, but you know, you you lose appendages, you lose your feet, you lose your your shins you, from from being diabetic and. And, you know, those, those are things that I, I really didn't understand the severity of until I became like, until I became diabetic. And so I wish I had taken it sooner or take it, taken it seriously sooner um, before I was actually diagnosed. Uh, because once you're diagnosed diabetic, there's no going back. Like I could go down and get off my medication and be in the normal range and, and not have to, not have to take another pill or do another, uh, another shot in the leg. Um, 
uh, which which is very attainable. It's 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 mm -hmm. within reach. But um, as far as medical records are concerned, you know, I could be normal, healthy, thin, not even overweight on BMI, but I would still be considered a diabetic because I was there at one point, and there's not any going mm -hmm. back there. Um, so you know, I, I'd say while you still have like the the perfect health, go back and and and. And really, really, really take weight loss seriously, because I, be, being who you are, you know, if if, if you're, I think I think I'll I'll leave it at that. If you want to cut out that last part, but uh, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely I definitely recommend to to take weight loss seriously and take it and take it seriously early. Well stated. Very well stated. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, sorry, we, I know uh, that's kind of long. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, that's what we got you here for, man. No worries. Yeah, as we kind of start to wind things down here, one question that we really always like to ask, and I'll get started to give you give you a second or two to think about it, is uh, not some. Sometimes today, like you, you can answer what's your favorite food, but we typically to go with uh, like today. Like, what did you eat today? What was your what was your keto meals today? And uh, like for me this morning, I went full on fat loaded butter in my coffee with a couple eggs and some leftover almond flour pancakes. Uh, lunch. Had to go out to eat with some customers, uh, got some chicken wings, kept it simple there, dry rub, like garlic parmesan, and I don't remember what the other one was. And then uh, dinner, had myself a giant steak and four eggs, and it was amazing. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> so my my breakfast, I was kind of in a run this, uh, kind of in a rush this morning. So um, HEB has these tortillas that um, that are called carb sense, and and I eat them pretty regularly. Uh, they say that they only have four net carbs in them. So uh, this morning I I threw one on the stove to heat it up, and I put some lunch meat in there, and that was kind of my breakfast because I didn't get a chance to 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 make any uh, bacon or eggs or anything. Uh, for lunch, I had um, a salad that had some chicken from uh, from last night. Um, and then also, uh, some tomato and an entire huge avocado. Um, and then I had ranch dressing with that. So it was, it was a very fatty meal. Um, and it was very, very filling. And, uh, for dinner, um, I wasn't feeling that hungry. So I, and this is, this is just, this is just one of the weird things that I make sometimes where I just want to make something real quick. Um, there, I, I've become a fan of these of these things called uh, costras de queso, which um, you literally take shredded cheese, um, put it onto like a, a, a flat top or a, a skillet and let it melt. And <laughs> I do that all the time. It becomes a tortilla practically. And um, mm -hmm. I, I took a hot dog from the fridge and I put that along with it, let it sear for a second. <laughs> Put wrap that up with a piece of bacon left over from yesterday, and that was my dinner. Wait, wait, wait! wait. Was... What's leftover bacon? <laughs> oh, fair, fair, <laughs> fair. So, um, so I, I put, I, I, ra I, I wrapped that up. So it was, it was cheese. It was a hot dog wrapped in cheese and bacon, but you know, of nice. course, no bread or anything like that. But that, that was my dinner, and I don't think I'm gonna eat anything else tonight. Yeah, I, I've done that thing with the fried cheese for almost everything. I mean, I, I've also had it to where, you know, you let it get really, really, really crispy on one side and you crack a few eggs on top and the eggs sink into all the nooks and crannies of the cheese. Mm -hmm. I've actually fried the cheese <clears throat> and then used that as a base for pizza and then just put like a little bit of pizza sauce and like pepperoni and then more cheese. And like it, this, oh, it's, it's endless. It's, it's amazing. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah the the, the uh what is it Ra the rouse pizza sauce r-a-o-s um is pretty good on carb numbers and sugars and throw on some uh, uh sausage bacon salami whatever for your meat and use that cheese base and you have a heck of a good pizza mm -hmm. so well one one thing that i've absolutely become like in love with is egg roll in a bowl that's like my mm. favorite my favorite thing um and uh, I've been able to find these these noodles called pasta zero. Um, the 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 main term I think is shirataki noodles. There's like mm -hmm. there's there's no there's no carbohydrates and the whole bag. Um, I don't even know. Maybe it's like twelve ounces or so. Man, might be wrong. Uh, is only like 15 calories and it is good when you when you saute it with a little bit of soy sauce. It goes great with like egg roll in a bowl. So. Those are two of my favorite or one of my favorite go-tos. Cool. Uh, Jim, how about you? What, what was your day of eating like? 
Um, I am not a breakfast eater, so didn't do that. Uh, we had a work lunch, and so I had a um, Cobb salad. Uh, so chicken, eggs, bacon, all that good stuff. And then um, what did I have for dinner? What did I have for dinner? Oh, I had um, like a left left some leftover uh, roast. So just you know some beef uh, type stuff with uh, green beans with a nice spoonful of bacon grease in there. So nice. that made my day. Sure. Okay, so I had uh, some some cold brew on the way to the to the gym. Uh, along with my caffeine pill because I just needed it. Uh, and then I had lunch at Cooper's Old Town Barbecue this morning um, at about 11. Uh, met up with a new friend. It was a very good time to hang out. He was in town from Seattle. Uh, and so I got to show him around a little bit and uh, get to enjoy some good barbecue. Got a pound of meat uh, there. And then, oh, oh, funny thing. They asked if I wanted them to trim the fat on my meat. <laughs> yeah yeah that didn't happen uh, so, so um so i uh so that was my my lunch uh dinner was a pork chop with some cauliflower rice like casserole cheesy stuff that my wife made uh the other day uh in meal prep so that was my day of i did have an afternoon fatty coffee from wild foods uh, whenever i was stocking up on some of my other items that i've been getting from there so i uh, i got one of those real quick too so afternoon coffee uh to to add to all of that so yeah that was pretty much my day of eating sounds awesome yeah absolutely okay well we have gone long but i think there's a lot of really good stuff here to unpack and i think it's going to be of value to a lot of folks so i don't uh regret it at one uh one iota uh and and so joy thank you so much for joining us where can uh people best follow your story you, you said that you posted to your instagram a lot mm -hmm. uh where where is that exactly yeah, so my Instagram is pretty simple. It's at Joey Does Keto. So all one word, Joey Does Keto. Cool, cool. And uh, then of course, uh, Joey's in the the Facebook group. You'll see him post regularly. Uh, he's uh, a great inspiration for for all of us, and so he is there as well, um, as well as the the rest of the three of us. Uh, Alberto, what's your your socials handles and such? Easiest place to find me is uh, Keto Man's Club. Hit me up through there. Uh, send me a direct message uh, on Instagram. It is at Capital Painter. And that is mostly because it's mostly work related. So a lot of automotive related stuff, some workout related stuff, random pictures of food. But uh, for the most part, it's just uh, work related. Interesting things if you're ever curious about what goes into painting a car. <laughs> Absolutely. Jim, uh, other than uh, the, the Facebook group, where can people get in touch with you? Uh, find me on Instagram, Jim Inman JR. Uh, I've been following Joey on there for quite some time and uh, other Keto Man's Club members as well. So uh, yeah, just hit me up on Instagram or in the Keto Man's Club on Facebook. Very cool. Same thing for, for, for me on the, the group. I'm in there all the time. Uh, so feel free to reach out anytime. I'm pretty prompt on responding to messages, generally speaking. Uh, you can also see my keto related posts on Instagram at Duckman Keto. And so, uh, that's uh, our personal socials. Once again, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on or, or remind you that we do have our, uh, podcast socials that we'd love for you to share around. Uh, and that is at Keto Man's Club Podcast. Uh, if you have any questions from today's podcast or comments, if you have any uh, ideas for us, feel free to email us at Keto Man's Club Podcast at gmail.com. And uh, lastly, if you haven't joined the group already, uh, go to theketomansclub.com. Go to it leads you to the Facebook group. Uh, get signed in, get get joined into the group because it's a really awesome group of guys for for you to uh, get uplifted from information from, and uh, really ma uh, they they're there to help maximize uh, your life and your health, and that's uh, that's so beneficial for all of us. Okay, gents, I think that's pretty much all I have. Any parting shots from any of you? Joey, you did awesome. Much appreciated, man.
thanks for yeah, having thanks for coming me. on uh yeah absolutely thanks for coming on man like you said you're right down the street i work in san antonio all the time one of my warehouses is right by the airport i'll have to i'll have to hit you up next time i'm stuck down there yeah for sure Some, sometimes i can slip away uh it's a slow news day i can i can usually get out of the office we are the news, Joey. We will make this part of your news coverage. That's how you mm-hmm. work the deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, yeah. well, it's been a great conversation once again. We will see you all next week with another exciting episode of the Keto Man's Club podcast. Until then, have a great rest of your week. Thank you for joining us for the Keto Man's Club podcast. Your support means the world to us. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Would you help us spread the word about the Keto Man's Club by sharing with your friends and family? We're available on all podcast platforms, so just search for Keto Man's Club and you'll find us. If you would like to connect with us, you can do so a number of ways. Our web address leads to our Facebook group, theketomansclub.com. That's T H E K E T O. M-A-N-S-C-L-U-B dot com. You can also follow us on Instagram at Keto Man's Club Podcast. Lastly, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out via email to Keto Man's Club Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to hanging out with you again next week.